up through this. He's a finish. I'm not a great lover of cats. That's my fear. You're a Hello and welcome to Have Your Say, Shadow Boxing. Today my guest in the studio, Anthony Tweety. Anthony is a farmer and a pessimist and lots of other things he's been called in his life. So apart from being a farmer, I know you are sort of an activist on a way for, you know, better treatment for prisoners and the life of prison. That's why I've come on. So tell me about your experience with prison. Firstly, I'd like to say that eight out of 10 people in prison are Aboriginal. And coming from 3% in WA, in in WA. Australia, yes. coming from 3% of the population of Australia, that's a statistical anomaly that defies probability. Something is very wrong when 80% come from 3%. Either they're the most criminal race on earth which I don't think is the, well, the real case. Something else is going on. But lots of Australians' opinion is that no such thing as first race. It's very racist if we are nominate one race as a first race. And that's where the problem is coming from, probably of the reverse racism. Some Australian, like Andrew Bolt, is represents. Yes. Basically, I see it as fear. You know, we're, we're just afraid of ourselves, and then we extrapolate that onto other people. And that's what we, we don't like in other people, what we, what we see in ourselves that we don't like. When we see it in other people, we hate them. But actually, it's kind of self-hatred. Mm. And if we can face it and just say, yes, well, that's the way I am and I can change. And other people are in that state of change too and flux. And nobody is constantly the same way all their lives. You can change. I can change. So back to the prisons of Western Australia. You got certain experience. Your first experience was realizing it, how many Aboriginal people locked into prisons in compared with the white population. Mm. So you've been a white person, so you've been in the 20% of the prison population. Why you get into prison and what was your experience? The thing is that the torture that's going on, like up in the um, uh, Northern Territory with the children, uh, it's going on all over Australia. It's still going on. I was in Albany prison. Yes. They classified me as a suicide risk, even though I'm not. Never mm. have been, never will be. So why did they classify you as a suicide risk if you, as a person, knowing it, you are not suicidal or was not at that time at all? So what do you think, how can they manage to that category? The police notified the prison. They put a red flag on me, it's called. Yes. Yes. That's because I gave them a bit of lip. Oh, marijuana, which is why I was put in jail. I was cultivating marijuana. And, um, in a big quantity or? Depends on what you call big, you know. I don't know. I've seen I don't know the market. Big, I I've seen admit. lorry loads of it in Afghanistan. <laughs> what I was growing was 100 plants, maybe. 100 plants. Yeah. Small, little ones. For your own use? Yes. Most of it was stolen. Uh, and then I was dobbed in. They just took the tops and they left the stalks and then they dobbed me <laughs> in. And then while I was in Albany prison being tortured, they um, came and hooked up my car trailer and stole everything I owned. So it was a rob, dob, rob act. It was and a bit you, poetic. And you are ended up in the prison, of course. Yes. So how much you got for your cultivation of... One year. One year. Yeah. So... Coach us through what's happened in a one year. Well, so your first, experience first is, of all, I was put in this, um, in, um, well, they took me from uh, Katanning to Albany in the back of a police van. And now the air conditioners in the police vans can't be turned off because of Eddie, somebody up in um, yeah, Galgooli, Leonora. He died. They, they cooked him in the back of a van. So it was about four degrees outside when they put me in the van and we drove an hour and a half down to Albany the air conditioner blasting. It was freezing cold in the back of the van. And they put a red flag on me. So when I was put in jail for pending bail, the prison said, well, you've got a red flag on you. Are you going to kill yourself? And I said, of course not. Mm -hmm. It's against my religion. You know, I don't, you can't. 
What's your religion? Hindu. Hindu by choice? Oh, definitely. Definitely. It is not really a religion, it's a philosophy. Yes. But if you can't handle your own karma and you um, kill yourself, then you don't get another body. You become an earthbound spirit. This is what they believe and this is what I believe too. So I always handle my own karma. Yes, maintain your karma and say, I'm not suicidal. Well, but they so, said you are. So yes. what sort of assessments you went through to become a stand, uh, I spoke, classified I spoke suicidal. with a gentleman in, when I was introduced in the prison and he said, um, well, we'll put you in OBS, in the observation room. Yes. And then one thing led to another. I had an argument with him. And, um, Who was that him? Was the, the well, prison he, officer? Or yes, or, yes, yes, I won't use his name. No, no, but, but the prison they officer. They offered yes. me uh, painkilling medicine because I had two crush fractures and a disc hernia from falling down, carrying a log, walking yep. backwards. Yeah, it hurt. And um, basically, that's why I was growing the pot. It works. It's a very good painkiller. They handed me a handful of white pills and I'm, I'm, I'm the nard about taking them. And uh, anyway... What sort of white pills you got from them? I don't know. That's what I wanted to know. Uh, there were about five or seven pills. I said, what are these? And they said, oh, there's Panadol and um, Ibuprofen and uh, some other things. I forget now, but I mm. refused and then to I finally the pills, did yes. take them. But because I was a bit arced up, because they wouldn't give me my nose pan patches or the oxycodone that I was prescribed, then I was stripped naked and put in the OBS cell with no proper sheeting, just two pieces of like cardboard-like material. And it was, it was May, it was freezing cold, it was just cold air coming down out of the vent. It was freezing cold. And I was in there for five days. So why straight. did they deny your original painkiller, which you've been subscribed for? Oh, because the other uh, people in jail would have stolen them from me and injected them with lemon juice or something or other. They just... But you've been in the observation cell, which is mean you are alone. Yes. So <laughs> who can steal it from Logic you? defies them. Logic defies them. You can't talk to them. They have their mindset, and that is that they're going to punish you. You're not in jail as punishment. You're in jail for punishment. Also, I was a remand prisoner, so I should have been taken to Canning Vale Remand Centre yes. rather than being put in a um, medium security prison. So why don't you be transferred into the Remind Center until your case yes. is solved? Another very pertinent and relevant question, Tibor, but one that I can't answer, mate, because... Have you asked them why this procedure not been followed with you? Yes, I've written to them, and uh, they said the superintendents... Have, there have been three or four superintendents since I wrote, yes. and uh, they haven't got any records. So. Not good records of what? Of your of complaint? Me. yes. <laughs> Nothing. Yeah. It's just lost, or, lost somewhere in the... Probably taken by one of the superintendents that go through Albany. Yeah, it's pretty outrageous. So anyway, after a year of experience of prison... <coughs> well, finally, prison, I was put in Arcacia. You know, I was finally, convicted yes. and put in Arcacia. There, they've converted all the single cells, which is about a three-metre by three-metre cell... A single cell, three by three. ...into a two-man cell. Who is managing Arcacia? Circo. Circo. Yes, wonderful English company. That's very like G4 notorious, notorious yes. Circo, who Black couldn't Water. even manage a hospital. Yeah. But they think, you know, if hospital couldn't be managed by Circo properly, is that, then they could manage, you know, the English can manage prisons because they are legendary for prison officers and managing prisons. I so help make they, them a profit. So I help make them a profit. Yeah. So uh, Circo is a profit-making company. They're happy with me. <laughs> and you think it's, it's wise to a uh, license to manage prisons for profit-making companies whose only aim is to make profit? Well, definitely not. No, the medical services, the dental services, there's one dentist for 1,500 men. And that in, lady in is prison. looking forward to resigning. And is the prison, the prison population got problem with their dentals? Well, if you're doing speed or ice, you definitely got dental problems, and a lot of people, especially the white people, the Caucasians who are in prison, they're in there for ice. Manufacturing, selling, ice. 
So how the dental service is working in a prison, apart from we know that one dentist for 1,500. I don't know what's the real ratio in real life outside prison, but I know that Australia's dental services not really up in scratch because of the cost and because of no free dental service. Mm. So mm. how's that work in prison? Well, the if, pliers, you, if you got a problem, yeah, if the you got a problem, are flat out. Yeah, the pliers are flat out, mate, and you get extractions. That's all. That's all. That's all, mate. Yeah, just open wide and. And how long you have to wait for the extractions? It's happening um, on. Well, you, you can, know, when you, you, can you, you you can get it done as an emergency. You can go there, but if you put your name down on the um, computer list. management system, it goes on for uh, uh, six months, a year. You can, six if months you're, to a year if you're not, for you're an not, extraction. If you're not in for a year, <laughs> yeah, you won't get any treatment at all. And hearing aid, you won't get a hearing aid. I'm slightly deaf. Um, and the medical service is kind of a sadomasochistic farce. You, there's... The doctors are all four, five, seven foreigners, and they've been brought in under contract, and so they're held as slaves, kind of thing. They don't want to be there. They want the out. prisoners don't want to be there. The medical services don't want it's, to be there. No one wants to be there, except probably the prison officers. But on that note, we have to go for a short break. But please stay with us because after the break, we're coming back with more on have your say shadow boxing with Anthony. <laughs> 